Suzanne Fountain. If she was around and you saw that smile, she just would light up the room. Ricky Olds. She's giggly and bubbly and just didn't, you couldn't be sad around her. Eric Talley. My son gave his life to save those people. Jody Waters. When she looked at you, you could just feel the love coming through her eyes and into you. Denny Stong. He's my best friend. He's a brother to me. Lona Bardkovayak. Every time I see her, she was just so warm. How are you, Jessica? And Nevin Stanisic. The unfairness of it all. This is going to be difficult for people to process. Kevin Mahoney. I just can't imagine how the families are feeling, the victims whose futures were stolen from them. Lynn Murray. Because what happens to Boulder happens to Colorado. Terry Liker. I knew Denny, I knew Ricky, I knew Terry. That's why I'm here. And I was just hoping anyone else that worked here was here and could hug them and make sure they're okay too. A growing memorial outside a Boulder King Supers shows just how strong our state can be amid tragedy. Within the past 24 hours, we have learned the names of the 10 people killed. Some were at work, others out running an errand at the grocery store. Tonight, flags fly at half staff across our state to remember the victims lost and will remain that way for the next 10 days. Good Tuesday evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Jessica Porter and I'm Ann Trujillo and we want to get to the latest that we know at this hour. Today, police named all 10 victims of yesterday's tragic shooting and they range in age from 20 to 65. They were grocery store employees, caring, warm spirited shoppers and a police officer rushing to save lives and we will share their stories throughout the hour. Police also identified the 21 year old shooter arrested. We will touch briefly on his past, but tonight is about the victims and innocent lives lost. Denver 7 Sloan Dickey kicks off our coverage with the growing memorial outside the King Supers on Table Mesa in Boulder. Sloan. Yeah, people have been streaming in and out of here all day, some with flowers, some with words of comfort. Some people knew the victims. Others said they didn't know anyone inside the store, but were just here to grieve. Everyone we spoke to said that pain and brokenness was all too real as we mourn those 10 lives lost. <laughs> I was in the store about five minutes prior to uh, the event. There was a guy who told me to run for my life, so I'm feeling grateful to be alive today. That's why I chose to play Bach, because um, I tried to find pieces that I thought were somber enough and yet melancholy. I've been really upset about it, so I thought like the least I can do is is come down and light some candles. <laughs> just broken, <laughs> like it's just, it's horrible. It's just horrible. We brought 10 roses, one for each of the victims. It makes you really realize how precious life is and how quickly it can be taken away. horrible and and I'm having trouble with words. It's it's shocking. I hope that flowers can do something to help us feel a bit better. There's a lot of pain. I've just felt very angry and very sad. Everyone needs some way to cope right now and music is mine and so I just wanted to share what I can. <laughs> Just a painful day here outside of King Supers. Now there's other vigils planned this evening by synagogues and churches in the area. There are also several other vigils planned for later this week. Reporting live in Boulder, Sloan Dickey, Denver 7. Just a beautiful outpouring. Thank you, Sloan. And with each passing hour, we are learning more about the innocent lives lost. They embodied the spirit of Colorado, and we will do our best to always remember and honor their legacy. Denver 7's Eddie Guajardo continues our team coverage tonight. Eddie, you spoke to friends of Jody Waters who describe her as a beacon of light. 
So many people knew Jody Waters and now crime tape marks the spot where so many lost their lives to a senseless act of violence and so many people I spoke with today, they say words fall short of comfort. Some feel anger, others feel hopeless. But the friends of Jody Waters tell me they don't want her to be remembered from this tragedy. They want people to remember her for who she was. Meet Jody Waters. A gentle spirit. With a charismatic personality. Jody sparkled. When she walked into a room, she was a breath of fresh air. I lit a light. She had a keen eye for design and bright green eyes that drew people in. When she looked at you, you could just feel the love coming through her eyes and into you. Stephanie, a friend of more than eight years. She was very generous of spirit. Says even at 65. She had this sense of design. Jody's dreams and aspirations were limitless. Her dream for the future was to open another clothing boutique. An opening day she'll never see or experience. You know, it. it um, I think what everybody says at these kind of events, you know, it hit home really hard. Scott tuned in as the terror unfolded. And then it just got worse and worse and worse. You don't think that it's going to happen to your neighborhood or that their dear friend would be a victim. Just shocked that she's now gone from this world. Gone after a trip to King Supers on Table Mesa Drive, where crime tape now marks the place she took her last breath. And that somebody would have just taken her life and he didn't even know her, he was, it was just such a random act. Stephanie and Scott posted a tribute to Jody on Facebook. Jody was a beautiful soul with a warm and loving heart and friends shared their memories of her. We were dance moms together. Our daughters had many sleepovers. Looking back now, I wish I'd told her even more, you know, what I thought about her and how much I loved her. But they say they know deep down, Jody would want people to focus on the great life she lived. Living life with excitement. A mother of two and grandmother who loved horses and hiking. Now, we did reach out to Jody's daughter. Right now, the family is asking for time to process this pain. They tell us when they're ready, they'll release a statement. And we'll be right there to share their words with you. Reporting live in Boulder, Addie Guardo, Denver 7. Thank you, Addie. There is also a growing memorial outside the Boulder Police Department for Officer Eric Talley. His police unit is now surrounded by candles. A mourner lit 10 of them for each of the victims. A former CU Boulder student body president worked with Officer Talley on campus and community issues. He really cared about students. I mean, I think it's kind of a prerequisite for, for officers in, in Boulder to be aware of the university and really care about students. Officer Talley graduated from Highlands High School in Albuquerque in 1988. He had seven children. Throughout the hour, we will share the stories of the lives lost to yesterday's tragedy. We also have them on the DenverChannel.com. All new tonight at 8, Boulder City Council announced it will hold a special meeting to honor the victims of yesterday's shooting. They will also acknowledge the need for community healing. That meeting will take place tomorrow night at 6. And we've heard so many of you ask how you can help. Boulder Police identified three official funds. One is the Colorado Healing Fund. Your help goes directly to victims, families, and those in need. The website is coloradohealingfund.org. The other two are the Community Foundation of Boulder County and the Colorado State Lodge Fraternal Order of Police. And today, prosecutors assured us justice will be served. Today, they identified the suspect as 21-year-old Ahmad Alisa of Arvada. And he's the man you saw yesterday handcuffed and led to the back of an ambulance by officers whose colleague had just been murdered. Denver 7 Chief Investigator Tony Kowaleski was the first to report crucial information on this case yesterday. And Tony joins us again this evening. Tony? Yeah, good evening, Ann. Today, as you've talked about all night, it's a day to remember the victims and their families. We do not know yet the motive. We're told that could be several days out, but we have a better understanding of what happened and a better understanding about the gunman they now call a cold-blooded killer. This suspect has been identified as Ahmad Alyssa 
21 of Arvada. Less than 24 hours after the gunman was walked out of that Boulder grocery store in handcuffs, we now know much more. He has been charged with 10 counts of murder in the first degree. The arrest warrant affidavit says the gunman purchased the weapon he used in the killing just six days before Monday's shooting. It identified the weapon as a Ruger 5.56 pistol, also described as an assault rifle. The affidavit also says the accused gunman's sister-in-law told officers after the shooting that she had seen him playing with something that looked like a machine gun. There was an exchange of gunfire, which a suspect was shot. A review of the 21-year-old gunman's criminal history by Denver 7 Investigates found no felonies, no protection orders, but our review did turn up a misdemeanor assault charge when he was in high school. The gunman apparently lived with family members at this home in Arvada. According to his Facebook profile, he was born in Syria and came to the United States in 2002. The killer, his name, that will live in infamy. But today, let us remember the victims. The man accused of gunning down 10 innocent victims graduated Arvada West High School in 2018. A report by our partners at the Denver Post quotes one of his former wrestling teammates who said, after losing a match, he immediately quit the team and yelled out in the wrestling room something like he was going to kill everybody. Nothing can fill the void for the families and their loved ones, but I could promise you that we will hold him accountable. Now, we also reached out to several ranking law enforcement sources to see if this alleged gunman was on their radar, maybe in other jurisdictions. Everybody we talked to today said they had no apparent contact with this gunman at 10 o'clock on Denver 7. We will have more on that misdemeanor charge. We've been going through documents and we'll share those with you at 10 on Denver 7. Live in Boulder, I'm Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski. I just can't imagine how the families are feeling, the victims whose futures were stolen from them from their families, from their loved ones. President Biden shares his condolences for the victims in Boulder. My heart goes out. Our hearts go out for the survivors. But in doing so, he also called for more strict gun control. I don't need to wait another minute, let alone an hour, to take common sense steps that will save the lives in the future. And for so many in our state, this latest tragedy opens up old wounds. I'm here to tell you as a surviving parent of this, you know, I don't consider myself a victim. I don't want to be a victim and I refuse to be. 